this year, I decided that I would go way over the top in our foyer for spring and Easter. And one of my ideas was creating this English garden inspired Easter egg. Isn't it pretty? It's very Victorian, I think, and it's also inexpensive and fun to make. So join me as I create this with you. This is actually part one in a two-part foyer um, for Easter and for spring, and so you'll see the second part actually in a few days. So my name is Shelley and my channel is Pretty Inspired Decor and I just love pink, all things pink. And I also love golds and greens and cream and all of that fits perfectly into this particular vignette that I am creating. So let me show you what I do to get started. Now, I bought these eggs at Dollarama. They are inexpensive here in Canada. They're about six inches long by about three and a half inches wide. They actually come apart, which is nice. And in order for me to hang them, Harold drilled two holes and then put some fishy line in for me. So, you know, this is what they look like unfinished. They're really pretty. They're, the gold ones are a little garish. They do come in other colors, blue and green and pink. I know Antoinette from Antoinette's place certainly has the green and the pink and they are so, so pretty. You really should check out her channel to see what she did with her eggs. The items that you will need for this DIY is some kind of a napkin and I found these at Dollarama for Valentine's Day last year, I think, and they're just so, so pretty. You know, there's clearly an English rose on there. You'll need some uh, Mod Podge. I'm choosing to use the matte format, but it didn't, doesn't really matter which one you use. The matte is easier because Mod Podge is actually harder to put on a surface that has a curve, unless you're going to do a whole bunch of small pieces, and I'm choosing not to do that. You will need some little brushes also from Dollarama or Dollar Tree. Obviously, you'll need an egg. You'll need something for them to dry on as you, you know, work on it because you can't do the whole egg at one time. I also have some beautiful ribbon in this rose color. Isn't it glorious? You can get this at Michael's right now. And I also have from Michael's this little gold ribbon with some glitz on it. I have my glue gun. I have some zip ties. I always use um, sewing scissors with the serrated edges to cut my ribbon. And then I also have some florals. I gained some roses and you know, these are more ranunculus, but they work beautifully with it as well. So let's get started. This is what it looks like when it's totally finished and covered in Mod Podge. You want it to look very vintagey. So you take your napkin, and most napkins are either three or four ply. These ones happen to be um, three ply. And it's important that you separate the napkin and I do that by just licking my fingers. If I didn't want the gold to show, I could actually leave one of the layers of the napkin, but because I want this to have that vintage feel, I actually have to separate all three layers of the napkin. And so you end up with something that looks like this. And then in order to make it easier to apply, all I've done is cut the pieces up into smaller pieces. Just again, because they're easier to apply and because this is a surface that is rounded. So you'll notice this one has been started. So I'm just going to open my Mod Podge, let's give it a good shake. I tend to start at the top and work my way down. 
So you'll notice what I'm doing here. I'm adding quite a thin coat of Mod Podge. Okay, once I've got that thin layer on, then I just take any piece. You can start with a smaller piece. I've just decided that I want the rows, you know, more at the top. You'll notice that there are some folds. I'm not going to worry about it, again, because I want it to have that, that worn and, and sort of antique look. And then I'm just going to take my Mod Podge and put a very, very thin layer over the top. Then I'll take one of my leaves and pop that into here because my goal, of course, is to cover all of the gold. I don't want any of that brassy gold to be stand out. I just want to cover it. Now I'm going to stop there because this is the same process that you use for the entire egg. You do have to sort of watch if you're going to hang them that you're not getting your Mod Podge underneath a piece of the paper. But there you go. So I'm just going to pop that there to dry. I will finish that later. And now I'm going to show you how I finish an actual egg. Because of course, this is just part of the process. In order for the egg to be as pretty, as pretty as can be, you have to embellish it. So let's start with this one. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a bow. Now, yes, I could just tie a bow, but I actually like this method better. So to get started, this is about 29 inches. I'm going to begin by making my first loop, all right? You just make your first loop. This kind of looks like double-sided ribbon, but it isn't entirely double-sided ribbon. So you're going to leave your first tail just hanging down with the best side coming forward. Then I'm going to take the ribbon and I'm going to make it into a second loop. And just kind of fluff that out. Make sure that my tails are similar in length. And I will actually twist that tail out in just a moment. Then I'm going to take a zip tie. It's so easy to do this method with the zip tie because it stays together and I do want these to be permanent so that I can use them year over year in my spring decor. So I'm just going to take the zip tie, pull it through to make it really tight and voila, in no time, you have a beautiful little bow. All I'm going to do now is fluff it out a bit, cut the tail off with my wire cutters, the tail of the zip tie. I'm going to dovetail my ends And I, all I do is bend it in half where the wire is, cut upwards, bend it in half where the wire side is, cut upward. Now I would recommend that you use wired ribbon, but of course you don't have to use wired ribbon at all. So you end up with this pretty little bow that is going to work fabulously on top of the egg. Now, I have my trusty glue gun. All I'm going to do now is separate the wire. That's the key. You have to have your wire separated or your fishing line separated. However, you're going to hang them. And I just put a generous glop of glue on the egg and then attach the ribbon. Pretty, and you won't even see this green when I'm done. Let's 
pop that on like that, wait for it to dry for a second. I'll just lay this here. This egg is all totally dry. Then I'm going to take one of the roses. And again, these roses are at Michael's this year. They're so pretty. I also want a couple of leaves. So I ended up, I'm doing a total of six of these eggs, just so that you know that. I ended up needing to buy two bunches of roses because I'm doing six and two bunches of the ranunculus as well. So I'm going to take this now. And the first thing I'm going to put on is the rose. And I'm gonna put that literally right in the middle. So already the green is covered. Just need to hold that for a second. And then you're going to take the leaves because I do want the leaves to be part of this as well. It just sort of takes it to that next level. If you just add some leaves in, I'm gonna add a leaf in the front. And again, you just have to kind of hold it to make sure it sticks. Those of you who use glue guns, you know you need to be careful so you don't burn your fingers. And then I'm going to add another to the back. Again, you need you know a fairly generous glob of glue so that it stays because you know once again my goal is to pack these away carefully and use them year over year. So I'm just going to put this one in here. Once that is set, then I'm going to get my second set of flowers and I want one of them to have a single stem and one of them to have a double stem. That's just what I liked for this. So you would cut it like that. And if you find, because sometimes this is what happens when things are piled together at Michael's, that your stems kind of fall a bit like that. All I do, let me just move this, is take the stems that are falling, pop a little bit of hot glue, just a touch, and pop your stems back down. And that way, when you do pack things away, you don't have to worry so much that your stems will start to droop. So you see, in no time, that's a perfect little ranunculus. So the next step is to add another glob of glue and take the single ranunculus and pop that right in there. And you'll notice that brings the rose, the ranunculus, and the rose leaves all together. And then at the back, again, I'm going to add another fairly generous glop of glue. And then I'm going to pop the double piece in there. Also want to add some ribbon to cover the, there's a little tiny seam, not that you can really see it, but I decided I wanted to add just that little, one more touch of embellishment. So I'm just going to pop that in there. Glue that down. This is maybe a quarter of an inch ribbon. And I tack it down in three places. They just are so, beautiful when they're finished. They look high end. They're using Dollar Tree and Michael's materials. And look at, you know what? If you were to buy one of these in a store, I bet you you would pay $30, $40 for something like this. I just think they are incredibly gorgeous. They will add so much beauty to my foyer. So I hope you come back. The next video you're going to see is actually not going to be my foyer. It is going to be my, my video for the spring Easter decor challenge in pink. So I hope you come back to see that. And because I know you're going to love it, it's over the top maximalist pink and it's oh so me, but wait until you see the foyer because it is so, so pretty. So if you have not already done so, I would certainly appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the like button, 
hit that notification bell so you get notification of future videos. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Tell me what you think of these eggs. And of course, share this video with people who love doing inexpensive DIYs and more importantly, who love to decorate their home as much as we do. So until next time, bye bye I will have Antoinette's channel, Decorating Ant's Place, listed in the description box because after all, she was the inspiration for creating these Easter eggs. And just to put it in your calendar, the video for the foyer part two will be up this Friday. I hope you all come back for that. And of course, back for all of the other spring creations as well. Enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your week. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram. I have some pretty cute pictures on that platform.